Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is the Ramble, mm -hmm. and I'm Alex, and we'll be here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that woman there, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh the, the, you, you're wearing lipstick today. It's Lori Thompson. I I am wearing lipstick. I have like a variety of colors in Revlon's uh, color stay. And man, they, it does last a long time. But they never tell you when you're buying a color, it has these stupid names like Tempest or Ba 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 Boom. Or, and it doesn't tell you anything about the color. At least Constantly Coral, which is my shade. Constantly I mean, Coral. <laughs> Yes, it tells you something about the color, but there are all kinds of names that you know. Midnight Rendezvous. What the? What does that mean? And so I, I think that you could just look at a color chart without knowing. Marjorie things. doesn't wear lipstick. She doesn't. She doesn't wear lipstick. No, no. And she's I, I, I think she did used to. She said, but she hasn't in years now. Yeah. You know, well, as you get I, older, you just give up and don't do anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You know? right. you, you got to prop yourself up to care. Yeah, yeah I, um, I I don't have lips though. I have really thin lips. Reba yeah. McIntyre and I have real thin lips. Yeah, and because you, when you have them, you notice other people with thin lips. And so if I don't put some color on them, they disappear into my face. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Marjorie just I I can't remember any time when uh, in our relationship where she's worn lipstick. Yeah. Well, she always looked pretty foxy when you would bring her out before you were married to California. Yeah, yeah, she, she looked fine, you know. But I, uh -huh. th I think there were certain things she didn't like to do, or you know, so I, 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 she felt she didn't need lipstick. So I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, it goes through. Plus, fashion goes through phases. I, you know, I look at Vogue occasionally yeah. just to see what what everybody else is doing, so that I can do it or not do it. And uh, it's you know it's they change all of a sudden you know one season is deep reds are in it and then the next next season persimmon is well, wait the you, you have a red smear on your on your shirt you I no, really no 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 no, 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 no. see see that what that you, yeah oh that says North Face oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> I guess the, I guess the cameras aren't that good. <laughs> No, because it's funny you mentioned red, though, because I frequently get lipstick in all the weirdest places. I mean, because you put, if you put lipstick on, then you decide you're going to wear something different. You put it on, it's always a liability. All, uh, old women who wear lipstick shouldn't. And because they get it all over no, their no, face. No, 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 they put it, then it goes into these creases. You ever notice that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, watch it now. <laughs> watch it. I could be about three years away from those creases. Well, at that I time, you pro probably won't use it, you know. Probably, you know, yeah. yeah. It's fun. We take, you know, a lot of vacations, we take a lot of cruises, and everybody kind of gussies up for cruises. Mm -hmm. But I am not, when I go on vacation, I don't want to gussy up for anybody. And so um, I kind of like first day will wear something cool and then just gauge what everybody else's sense of cool yeah. is. And then see where I want to fit in, because yeah. you just want to relax. You know, you just want to have fun. Yeah, you know, the last time we started to talk, this we were it was pre-Thanksgiving, and you were yes. talking with your now husband. I can say yeah. that. <laughs> I know a word I, I never I, thought I'd. No, I find that weird to associate with you. How's your husband? Um, I know it. it believe me, it's still weird for me too. And he was going to the store to get graham crackers. Yes, and he was a little dismayed for, for, because not because he, he was not, but let me say this, folks. It wasn't because he was going to drink milk. Okay, so <laughs> go ahead. He is a straight arrow, but yeah. um, no, it's uh, because he has he is like the king of cheesecakes. He makes the best cheesecake. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you about the cheesecake. Oh man, he makes uh, he's making a pumpkin one. 
uh, for Thanksgiving. Really? Because tis the season. Yeah. Oh, they're dream- they're so dreamy. Hmm. And I'm not a big dessert person, but hmm. he's a real good baker, and so he was keyed on. He's always baking something, and he's a he's very good at it. But tomorrow we're going to some people's house, and they have requested. We did this. His- we did this the day before Thanksgiving, folks. But now it's way after Thanksgiving, so but. Oh, so oh, how was forget. it? How was it over there? It was great <laughs> over there. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oops. Don't you know how uh, to yep. fake this up? How was it? Uh, it was dandy. And my, that cheesecake yeah. uh, was delicious. No, he's a really good dessert maker. And I'm not much of a dessert person except when cheesecake is in there. Well, I mean, you know, you get something that makes a good cheesecake. I have somebody... Makes a Russian something. She's Russian, and this Russian uh-huh. cake—it's a—it looks like a bunt cake, but it's—it's it's got other stuff in it, and it's just—it's to die for. It's really? Just, uh, and she and oh, she's coming over. For, excuse me. She came over for Thanksgiving and brought <laughs> one. That is so super. You're just trying to make me feel better, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. and plus, it has your friend bought an Instapot. Then that opens up a whole other world of cheesecakes. Instapots? You cook them in Instapots? Ricky does, and yeah, and they turn out great. They're small. They tend to be smaller. You know, you don't, you can't control the size because it's only the size of the Instapot. Yeah. And so, but man, they're good. There's something about that cooking process that increases the density or brings it out. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Wow. Well, anyway, another year's passing. My n- n- my next birthday is coming up soon. I know what one, it is. Once Thanksgiving is over, I know that I'm coming closer to, to being closer to death. <laughs> uh, it's you know your positive outlook, Ben. It's just <laughs> it must be refreshing. December eighteenth, I will be if I live that long. Oh, caveat, caveat. Eighty-four years old. Wow, that's pretty good man you look great for 84 i think well i look at it this way i'm i'm only going to be uh, about 15 years younger than jimmy carter so you know <laughs> oh well, when Roslyn went uh, yeah I, I felt so bad about that yeah because you know what why do i feel I, bad she lived to be 96 mazel tov you know she was but uh with parents and they were parents um, at least from my point of view, when one goes, and then oh, the other. I, well, by the there. time we're by the time this is on, he may be dead. You know, I yeah. mean, it's just <laughs> it's just they were so. These were two people. I mean, they met met each other in I think high school. They did, yeah, in planes. And he he <laughs> uh, proposed to her, and she said no. <laughs> you know, and but he said, "Oh, think about it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, but but uh, you know. So when you've had a mate that long, and she goes, you go, you know. You Your just, whole world is thrown. You're, yeah. You're, you're, uh, you yeah. know, to begin with, he's probably quite senile. I mean, you know. Uh, yeah. But I'm sure he knows she died, and I'm sure that affects him. And then it's just going to be like you know, he's almost a hundred. He's ninety nine. Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and at that point you go. I don't have anything to live for, you know. Yeah, especially She's without gone. your mate, hmm? it disables your whole identity yeah. when you're mate. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, if you've been married that so. long, or you haven't worked to retain something besides that. Yeah, so I mean, it, 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 they usually go right after that if, if they if did. they really loved each other. My mother. Went uh, something like 40 years after my father. <laughs> so I figured that wasn't a good marriage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She got married twice and had an equally long marriage. I, I, yeah. oh, you know, there's a relationship that, that your parents have to each other that you don't know about. And you won't ever understand. And you won't ever know about it. Uh, and uh, my father, I thought, was a great guy. I loved him. You know, and my mother, eh, you know, I mean, I love my mother, but, you know, it, it, she was too, too hugging. And, you know, that's where I get my uh, 
my uh, what do you call it when you don't like enclosed places my uh, your, uh don't tell me <laughs> autistic uh, claustrophobia. claustrophobia that's where i get my claustrophobia from she was just so you know mm. well you were her one you know and i was the only one yeah one. yeah i was the only yeah. one yeah awesome. uh and we were talking about me being an only child how wonderful that was the bad part about it was is you had a lot of responsibility you had to live yeah. up to all, all their expectations of you. Yeah, yeah. see, and then, and sometimes it feels like a burn on your neck, like with the oldest child. Yeah. And my mother had overcome so much about her childhood and her station in life that I did feel that expectation deep, 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 but I let it go too far. What? You know, I let yeah. it, and also parents who shame their children, yeah. stop it. Stop it right now, because what it, all it does. Yeah, yeah well, is, here, here's the thing: you're, you're expected maybe to, to be something in life special, you know. And uh, I, w I went into show business, but for my father, that was wonderful. Uh, you know, I had yeah. comp I had done something good. Where any to yeah. any other parent, they probably want to commit suicide. <laughs> you know, always in he's 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 in show business. He's like a juggler. You know, I mean. <laughs> Well, the, the thank you. What's that thing about um, and give up show business? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <No line. laughs> right. But well, that's what I liked radio because radio you got a weekly paycheck. And it, see, I wanted to be an actress, but I it, wanted to be an actor. Yeah, I thought you did, yeah. and then but needed some more stability than that. You know, being from a good Midwestern upbringing, you have to have a little stability. I mean, where I grew up, everybody owned their home. Many of them did not leave town right. to seek right. a career or employment, and uh, so you know it was it was something I was very cognizant of, and so radio kind of put the two together for me. Yeah, well, what happened was as I went into radio because number one, it, it kind of came into my life through a high school radio program, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I knew I wanted to go into show business of some sort, but then I decided I want to be an actor. Yeah, but acting was a hard profession, you know. Uh, lots of rejection. Lots I didn't of think lo I... lots of rejection and probably very little success. All right, right. Be because, be because of all all the people in my union, I think only two percent are working. Yeah. All right. I, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I decided that I would go into radio, which I enjoy. It. I considered it kind of show business, and yeah, I would do, I would do radio until I could get movie parts. That that I I could be so good in radio, somebody would ask me to be in a movie, and then I yeah I yeah. think that you know we and you could have had that man if the timing and the technology was different. Well, no, nobody nobody ever asked me to be in a movie as successful well, as been, I became. Yeah, well, as, but if you'd been in you Los and Angeles, I you and I were supposed to be in a movie. We were supposed to be in Bugs Life. They really? The film. Don't you remember they called us at at like ten o'clock in the morning and they said. We have two characters in this film, and we've created them based upon you and Lori. And can, I don't remember. And, and can you be out here this afternoon to Pixar to talk to us about doing the voices for these characters? Yeah. You, don't, you don't remember that? No. You, you must have been drunk remember. at the time. <laughs> uh, and I said, sure, we'll be there. Yeah, man. And uh, uh, we'll call you later, okay? And so time passes, and they didn't call, and they didn't call. And they finally called at 1 o'clock, and they said, we had another meeting. We decided we don't want to use those characters. Wow. We could have been, man, we could have <laughs> been those animated voices that are all going to celebrities now. Yeah. yeah. Man. Oh. No, I don't, I don't remember that. I remember once that we were in a George Clooney movie, movie but you had to know we were there. Um, he, it was with Michelle Pfeiffer. It was called One Fine Day. Yep. Yeah. And yep. the character wakes up, and they were they had us on the radio. Well, if people want to really hear us, here's what I suggest: yeah. if you have um, surround sound, yeah, kill the front speakers. Okay, and then you'll hear nothing but us in the back. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed the show that day, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're in luck. Well, they came to me and they said, "Do you mind if we we'd like to use your show as a you know a, a George Clooney's going to be waking up in the morning listening to the radio." And we want you on, you guys on the radio. And I said, oh, sure, fine. How much? Yep. And they said, oh, no, yep. we're not paying anything. 
<laughs> I don't remember. And that I said, part. "Go ahead, do it anyway." You know. Yeah, it'd be fun. It'd just yeah. be fun. And if everybody goes to watch, you ever see one fine day with George Clooney and Michelle Pfeiffer? Uh, uh, the scene where he wakes up in the morning, the clock radio goes off, and it's me talking to Laurie. Oh wow, fun, fun! I don't think I've ever seen. Um, so. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, mentions, yeah, we could get on IMDb. <laughs> and, you know, as voices you can barely hear in George Clooney movie. Let me, but let, I me see, let me see if I can find that clip and send it to you. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, because yeah, I was doing more TV before I got to San Francisco. And I thought maybe I'd like to be an anchor because things were starting to go well in St. Louis. Um, but I just hated the weather in St. Louis. And so when I got this San Francisco radio offer, you know, I that that became it was a major market, and it was started to be so much fun. But you had a great vo- I, you had a great voice for radio. I mean, you did, you had good looks for TV too, but you really look you sounded great on radio. You know? Well, thank you. I I loved radio because it's magic. And radio, everyone who's listening gets their own red wagon. When I say red wagon radio everybody gets their own red wagon on tv you show a red wagon that's going to have to go to five hundred thousand. well it, 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 it it's uh, you know i said i often said to people the reason i loved radio it was i said it was the greatest visual medium we have because it, people get to make their own well visions. because you can create the vision yeah They're, right uh, nobody knew what i looked like for a long time in fact i never allowed my picture to be taken in san francisco or I, really? or I turn my back to the camera or whatever uh, because I didn't want people to see what I look like. And the reason uh-huh. I didn't want that was that I felt that the magic was that people in their minds could imagine what I look like. I think that's valid. Yeah. Because I remember were- the most shocking thing that happened to me when I was a kid. I loved my radio. I loved listening to radio. I mean, I have a love, I've had a love affair with radio all my life. TV, not so much. Radio, absolutely. And I grew up on the radio. And I would have radio programs that I would listen to. And uh, and, and and then I would suddenly, I would see a picture, a photograph of the guy who was the host of the show. And I go, he doesn't, doesn't look like the guy like he sounds like. Right. He I couldn't imagine that voice coming out of that guy. Because you'd already created an image exactly. in your head. Exactly. And that was the beauty of radio, was that, you yeah. know, you didn't, you know, in most cases you didn't know what they looked like. You knew what Jack Benny looked like because he also made movies, you yeah. know. But, you know, with shows in San Francisco where there was a guy who was an announcer who told stories or whatever, you just imagine what he looked like. And then when you see a picture of him and you don't hear him talking, you can't imagine that voice coming out of that guy. Yeah, it just because it's a complete, oftentimes it's a complete non sequitur. Yeah. And speaking of the magic of radio, there's a movie I think you might like called All the Light You Cannot See. Yeah, I already saw it. Isn't it great? I thought it was terrific. I, mean, I did too because it, it's just, it captures it, that magic. It got a very and low the, rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And I, I said to Marjorie, I said, this is one of the better pictures I've seen in recent times. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it's, it's actually a mini series, right? They're yeah. four installments yeah. or something. I loved it. I mean, every night. Uh, so, yeah, I would recommend yeah, that. No, I, and she was terrific, the blind girl. Uh-huh. She's actually yeah. blind, you know. I wondered about yeah, she's that. She's actually you know? blind. Yeah, so that, that kept uh, the politically correct people off the, their backs. And have you noticed that this uh, Israeli Palestinian. I should, conflict, I should say, this recent Hamas thing. It's getting actors and actresses fired if they come out with the wrong sentence. Yeah, that's wrong because, you know, there are two okay. opi- there are two opinions to be had here. And I yeah. don't know if you remember, but even back when we knew each other, I, I was, what is that? There's some kind of sound coming through. I, I guess it's. Oh, that's my neighbor. He's playing Bob the Handyman. Oh. Okay. Is that it? Can you hear it loud? It's going it comes out. and goes. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it? Oh yeah, that I, I I read about these people who have an opinion, and and my opinion for years was I was always pro Palestinian. Oh yeah, you and, and, and people say, well, but you're Jewish. How about your homeland? I said, well, to begin with, 
I'm I'm not an Israeli. I'm not right. a Zionist. I am a Jewish American. Okay, Amer- American happens to be Jewish. Yes. Uh, and I n- never liked the idea of Israel because I knew that one day something would happen and Israel as a political entity would make some kind of colossal mistake and then people would say to me, how do you feel about what your people are doing to blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, the day right. ha- and the day has come, you know, where people go, well, how do you feel about your, your homeland, your people? And I'm going, I, they're not my people. These, they're Zionists, they're Israelis, and they happen to be Jews. Right, and I think it's being done by people in, in entertainment. They've been taking a stand yeah. because their career was lacking. I know Amy Schumer took a lot of heat she was really so uh, just angry about it. I mean, she took a platform and then was, it, was, she, was she pro? Is she pro Israel on that one? I imagine she's she would, pro Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it just uh, it isn't a matter of being pro Israel. Uh, like nobody's pro Hamas. Forget that. You know, <laughs> no. That's no. like saying I'm pro Nazi. Okay, you know that yeah. you can't say you're pro Hamas, uh, but you right. have to separate Hamas from the uh, the people and mm-hmm. you know it's funny I have a guy in my show calls me and he he's very much for the Israelis in this fight and he huh? goes well you know all those people in in Gaza they let the uh, Hamas run that country and uh, you know I kept saying well it's been they allowed them to do it in 2012 I think it was and they just never <laughs> let go of their power and they said well yeah well they don't do anything about it you know, and, and he blamed them that way. And I would, afterwards, I thought about it and I said, I thought to myself, what about all those Jews in concentration camps? I imagine there were more Jews in the concentration camps than there were guards. Why didn't they yeah. turn around and fight them? Because in those situations, you are being oppressed, okay? And you, your you, spirits, you care, about your, care about your life, the life of your family, all of that, so you just don't make trouble, and I I, I understand it, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only time there was ever an uprising in any of the ghettos was in the Warsaw ghetto, where they had an uprising. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that uh, that was all, the only one I can remember, you know. I mean, they, they got they got on these trains and they passively went to these concentration camps, you know. We, so we, it's whatever lie is being perpetrated in that in the confines of that uh, situation, you know, it's, it, but I, I, I've always felt sorry for the Palestinians because they need to be recognized and have a homeland. And right. they're, because their homeland was taken away from them in 1948 by the uh, United Nations. And by the way, where is the United Nations right now in all of this, okay? Want, they, they created yeah. the situation, they should be out solving it, you know? Right. Well, because my friend in high school who was Palestinian, yeah. she had to leave because her house was taken. Her house was taken and yeah. occupied by Israeli interests. Yeah. So she looks at the whole thing very differently. But we, you know, and well, they they go, oh, these Palestinians, they hate the Jews. Well, uh, they hate Israel. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I hate, that's I it. hate saying hate Jews because you know anyway. Uh, they hate Ju- they hate uh, I- Israelis and they hate well they hate Jews too by yeah and, by and she was uh, I viewed it kind of through that prism of her friendship yeah. because she is but one wouldn't of you powerful. wouldn't you be pissed off at them if you you were thrown out of your home and had to move into yeah. the de- had to move into the desert you know yeah so well, see and yeah. that, when we were friends I was in seventh grade. So I, my awareness of the, you know, the global political environment was really limited, yeah. and it was like I can't believe they threw you out of their home, your home. What you just went home and other people were living there, and she explained it to me, but it's been so many years ago I can't yeah. remember the yeah. details. So I mean, there are two sides to this, and I think that the the Palestinians have uh, been given a lousy deal. You know, I do. I think they have been misrepresented by Western media. I mean, I'm not saying that Israel doesn't have a right to exist at this point. It's been too long, and they're there. You can't suddenly say they shouldn't be there any longer. But right. but I think that we have to say, what do we do for the Palestinians? What do we do to make them feel that they have something? 
you a know, voice. A vo- and yeah. a voice. And they aren't minimized in, in the eyes of the world. And that, you know, the United States comes up and they, oh, uh, uh, Israel's the hero in this thing. Well, no, Israel was the victim and a very terrible victim of a very terrible thing that happened by this horrible organization called Hamas. But Hamas are not the Palestinian people, just like Israel isn't the Jewish people. Okay. Right, exactly. Well put. And the thing too that, that she mentioned is if you were and they and she has relatives mm-hmm. living who are Palestinian in Gaza. And so she said if you um, basically um, if you are a Palestinian, you view what's going on right now there as kind of an apartheid. I mean, they have trouble getting housing, lots of difficulties in, in acceptance. It's like when I first found out that at the turn of the 19th century, um, there were signs saying no blacks, no... Well, uh, 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 we're running over, but to hell with it. I, okay. liked, I like this discussion. The fact is that, that the Palestinians are so forgotten that even people who should care about them really don't. The Saudis don't care about them. You right. know, uh, uh, all they care about them is that, well, uh, look what the Jews are doing. Yeah, the Jews again, it's not the Jews. <laughs> right. But you gotta remember, Israel is a Zionist state. It is formed on under, the the, the, under Zionist theory, which was written and codified by Theodore Herzl years ago about the Jewish homeland, which, you see, my argument was we shouldn't have a Jewish homeland. And people would go, well, why don't you think the Jews should have had a homeland? And I said, look what happened once before when they knew where we all were. <laughs> really, I'm serious. I mean, they yeah. knew where we were, and they got us, and they rounded us up, and they sent us off to concentration camps, and they killed us. Well, yeah. you know, I believe... As my uh, my father-in-law, who was the head of the jo- Jewish Socialist Bund, which was the other group that opposed the Zionists, the they, be- they believed in the diaspora. And the diaspora right. was going out all over the world, populating the world, and wherever you go, take your culture with you. See, that's so pure and wonderful. Yeah. I love, I remember... I remember we used to talk about the Bundists, which I had never heard of before you were telling me about right. them. And I thought that's such a pragmatic approach. Well, the, the truth of the matter was in the, uh, in the uh, uh, what do you call it, in the uh, uh, ghetto, in the Warsaw ghetto, when they had that uprising I talked about. Yeah. Um, the, the Israelis would like you to think it was the Zionists, but it wasn't. It was the Jewish socialist Bundists who were fighting the Nazis Uh-oh. in the Warsaw Ghetto. Okay. And they so, always were at polar opposites of each other. When my when my father-in-law, after the war, went to Israel, he couldn't be run for something because he was a Bundist, not a Zionist. And well, see, that's... If he had decided, I'll be a Zionist, he would have been probably the first prime minister of Israel. Wow. Yeah, but yeah. he wound up coming to the United States and, you know. Yeah, that is that is a very indication of an unhealthy bias, if nothing else. Yeah. Against, against yeah. us. Well, uh, believe me, <laughs> Israel has had their biases over the years. And uh-huh. somebody, somebody has referred to Israel as an apartheid nation. That's what I, yeah, that's what I was trying to uh, yeah. express that their point of view, the Palestinian yeah. point of view, is yeah. they feel they are the victims of apartheid. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's you know, but you have two sides here, and and one side has never been listened to. Never been a, 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 a you know, they haven't made, you need a two-state solution. And you need to have the, the Palestinians feel they have a stake. This was their country at one point. It no longer is. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do to yeah. keep them happy? Yeah. So, a, anyway. a bilateral solution. God damn it. We, we run out of time. So run out of time that we're running over here. Well, you know. we best But, but, the, we the, best but, but getting, getting back to the final thing of what we were saying, I'm a little sick of everybody getting in trouble because they post a post one way or the other. Yeah, you, it's you an know. opinion. 
It's an opinion, and I think having a pro-Palestinian opinion is not a, uh, an, uh, to begin with, it is not um, uh, anti-Semitic. Uh, no. Uh, because, uh, believe me, I know what anti-Semitism is. I've lived it, okay? I grew up in an all-Italian neighborhood where I was known in some circles as that dirty Jew. You yeah. know, but I never let it affect me. I never let me, it never formed my opinion about Italians, <laughs> you know. Uh, I just yeah. I just realized that this is what exists in this world and and there are hateful people. That's it, you know. And, I, and that I'm, I'm not one of those hateful people and I will never allow myself to become one of them. And I think what Netanyahu has done is probably create more anti-Semitism in this world in a couple of weeks than anybody I can think of. Yeah, I can't remember a Middle East situation that has been so polarizing in yeah. my lifetime ever. Well, also, yeah. if people are anti-Semitic, they now feel they're being given permission, a sense of permission yeah, to that's become true. even <laughs> more anti-Semitic. Hey, yeah, listen, kiddo, I love talking to you. Uh, we, we should I, just, I, I think we just should just turn this into our own show. You know, we should, you know, yeah, and, and do it once a week and talk to each other for an hour. Maybe bring uh, somebody like Chuck Farnham in to join us. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, like I'd that. be totally game. I, I, I love in, in the next couple of weeks, we'll arrange for this whole thing because I'm getting a little tired of doing a show every single night. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I will see. You can count on me, ladies. And, and, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the lovely <laughs> and attractive. Lori Thompson. Thanks, Lori. Thank you, doll. Bye-bye, dear. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yes. Thank you very much, Lori. We appreciate it. And uh, that's uh, that's uh, good of you to join us. She's, she, she takes out time out of her busy life to do that for us, folks. I can't figure out why I'm trying to make it so that I, I, I look at my camera so I'm looking directly at you and uh, sometimes I'm not. I don't know. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, you know, the other day on Friday, we only had two callers uh, and then myself for a total of three. And uh, that was very vexing to me and very bothersome to me because we have never had that little a participation on this program. And it doesn't look like it's going to be that much better tonight. And I have been deciding that I'm going to, like tomorrow night, I'm not doing a show. Okay? I will be doing a show. There will be a show here. It will be a thing called Alex and Friends. And... Uh, it will uh, be uh, Lori and uh, Albert Reynoso and Chuck Farnham uh, all put together as a nice little package. Uh, and that I will run. And that may be what finally turns out to be the only program I do here outside of the Monday show. Uh, because the participation I'm getting on the Ramble is just zero, zilch, okay? And I really, it, it's insulting, and it's depressing, and uh, I would rather just have a show that's kind of pre-recorded and uh, uh, has some good people on it, and I'm sorry for the people who do participate in the show, but th those people have become less and less. As a matter of fact, right now, I'll admit the ones that are here, and uh, they're, uh, let's see here, it's a, uh, there's Jeff, and there's uh, Alan, and there is Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Hey, oh. man. What? Um, so, and Chuck. Oops. Hey, Matt. So, so. Oh, Jeff's got his browser on. I'm on. No. Not now. No, Not you're now. okay. You sound like you're okay, Jeff. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Hello, uh, Charlie's having trouble connecting. Oh, there he is. Hi, Charlie. Hi. It yeah. Took me a second. Yeah. Huh? What? 
No, I hit the wrong button. It took me a while. <laughs> to oh, okay. All right. Hit the wrong button. Oh, what can I say? Mm -hmm. Well, tonight we have three people. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Mark Thorner, uh, who never calls usually, but he, tonight he probably feels sorry for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Here he is. There he is. How are you, Mark? Oh, been better. Really? Yeah, been better. I got laid off from work. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did 85% of my division, so. Oh, but, oh, wait a minute now. You know, this is starting to happen a lot lately. Yeah. And I hate it when companies do that. In fact, I make it a, 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 a how can I call it, a policy of mine that if I know of a company that's letting a lot of people off, I don't do business with them. Uh, you really don't want me to mention this company because you do quite a bit of business with them, I think. Really? Yeah. Hmm. What? Uh, Walmart? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. But you're you're on. You're close. It is a big box. Oh, oh yeah. No. So not that one. It can't be that one. That guy's good. Well, you know what's happening is these companies feel that the way in which to approve the bottom line is by getting rid of people when really that isn't the thing to do. You don't, you know, it always got it bothered me that people get fired for just doing their job and the people who have been, not been taking good care of the company, like the heads of the company, still have their jobs and their big, uh, 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 you know, uh, salaries. Uh, it's terrible. It's just terrible. And... Uh, Sometimes huh? companies do lay people off to make their stock prices go up. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's 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 believe me. Um, in the several years I worked in corporate communications for American Express, boy, did I get an education on finance. The world, that world. Yeah. And oh boy, yeah, uh, it, it's scary. Well, if it's a company that I think you're talking about, and I'm sure it is. Um, does it start with a C? No. No. Oh, good. Oh, oh. Oh, good. So well, bad. then I can shop at Costco still. No, 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 no. I wish. I mean, uh, I would love to. No, I work logistics. Uh, that's the word they call it now. Mm -hmm. It's another retailer that yeah. deals with electronics. Oh, okay. Does it start with a B? Yes. Oh, okay. I got it. I don't do business with them much anyway. So, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, the reason that they're having financial problems is because they're not the greatest company in the world. Yeah, you think? Yeah. You know, I mean, really. Uh, yeah, and you do, but you don't, you don't help your bottom line by getting, getting rid of the only asset that you have, which is the people who work for you. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. And when, when they started to lay off and scale back tremendously mm -hmm. on the salespeople, it was like, you, you know, um, to quote a movie, uh, sort of, Amazon was going to drink their milkshake. So it's like, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, I mean, it's it, 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 big box stores like that one, the electronic big box stores are really having a real problem. Yeah, no kidding. You know, I mean, um, I can get better prices at B&H, at Adorama, if I want, you know. Yeah. Uh, I can get, uh, uh, you know, and then they don't lower their prices. They're not competitive with those people. Well, yeah. actually, they do. They do price match. <clears throat> that much. They, they, do, they do that, but there are other issues. They're, they're, it's yeah. just like... Well, let's see how long it's gonna, they're going to last because the person <clears throat> the company now I think is the wrong person. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. like I said, you know, they're, you know, she took a less of a pay cut, but uh, she's still making millions a year. So it's like, well, but my question is, let, let's say the company is, has problems. Okay. They weren't your fault. They weren't no, the fault they, of the no. people that worked with you. It was the fault of the leaders of that company. 
Okay. Yeah, but you know, the worst thing, Alex, mm -hmm. my work has been outsourced. Really? That's what they're doing. They're outsourcing all the support. Ugh. And it's going to bite them in the ass. You know, it, it's like, yeah, on paper, this probably looked like. And that that logistics company reached out to me. And it's like, well, you're paying me more. You know, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, in the meantime, start, I have. Starts with the B. Have, what starts <laughs> with the B? Bonzo. I, it, I, we don't want to say. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Big box. Yeah. That's what it's starts a big with box a store that's nationwide. Yes. Okay. I get it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just, it's terrible that the people who lose their jobs are not the people that cause the problem, is what I'm yeah. saying here. Oh, no. I, you know, pre you're, you're preaching to the choir here, Alex. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and I was looking at some kind of retirement anyway, like within the next year or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any kind of 401k there or anything like that? A very good. I mean, the 401k, look. The package, I'll tell you this much, was actually a very good severance that they gave. Mm -hmm. And the 401k was one of the best I've ever had. And so. I, I remember my uh, my severance at Sirius XM. Was it good? <laughs> well, oh. let me put it this way. It was full salary. OK, for 16 weeks. <laughs> yeah that's yeah yep you know so um uh that 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 that'll show you what how, how good a company they were i worked for them for nine years oh yeah i was wondering yeah you were the you wow you were there for nine years yeah it, but at nine years i think that i was owed a little bit more you know but it, it's just it's terrible you know, it's terrible what people do these days and the way they get rid of people. And uh, the people they get, they, they don't, it, it's just they, they're not doing right by their company, period. Right. You know, you've got other companies too that do exactly the same thing. Whenever I see the fact that they are, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing this sort of thing, I'm going, uh, they're insane. You know, because that's not the problem. And quite frankly, that's not going to help the bottom line. How many people were let go in your draw when they got rid of your people? We're talking a nationwide division, 85 percent. So. Mm -hmm. Tens of thousands? No, no, nothing like that. But oh, okay. we're talking maybe hundreds. Hundreds. OK. Yeah. OK. Let's say it's 200. Would that be good? Yeah. Okay. Two hundred at how much a uh, how much a a year? That's. I can't even. I can't even start. I know where you're going with this, Alex. But I'm saying, are how you know how many uh, 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 stereos? <laughs> There's an old term for you. Uh, how many how many uh, computers do they have to sell to pay for those people? Not a lot. Well. Honestly, you said it, Alex. The nature of the business, it's the services that seem to be making a bit more money. Mm -hmm. The other problem was that in the late later 90s, early to, wow, I guess 2010 and whatnot, mm -hmm. there was this incredible, like, they were building Best Buys at every, oh, I said Oops. it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> building, they were building at every exit across the country yeah and there was no need for that you know you you if you want to be successful close half the stores nationwide and you know rethink you know but well, what uh, they did is they kept putting it kept adding stores and adding stores and adding stores and they did that for their own ego well no the stock analysts are the ones that tell you same thing happened with my sister when she was the co-ceo of a nationwide brand. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you have to expand. You have to you have to keep opening, you know. That's the that's what they do. And they did because you know what? The money was flowing. 
at, that a, point, at a certain point, you got to yeah. remember, I mean, they used to be like, remember Circuit City? Oh, God, I could go. How about Lafayette? Oh, well, Lafayette? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Circuit City, they were everywhere. Yeah. You know? I was surprised they went out of business. Oh, I wasn't. Yeah, me too. I no. was I. You know, you can just, you can just, there was a guy here in New York. They opened up one store. You know who I'm talking about, right? I, uh, I know exactly, and uh, there's a... a we can little, name him. We can name oh. him. His name was, it was called Crazy Eddie's. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had one store. Well, they got very popular because, you know, their prices are insane. They, you know, they, they had this pitch that really worked. Mm -hmm. And so they did that. And then they opened up another store and another store and another store and another store. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Suddenly there was no more Crazy Eddie, you know? I mean, it was ridiculous. And, and so you sometimes you can over expand too fast. Yes, uh, hello to Brian Neary, who is joining us tonight. But you know what? You know what? And I know you've said this several times on the outs, but you know, you, you have to think about, like you guys are saying these, these uh, that, that store is being pushed everywhere and they're being told to open more and stuff like that. You know, the same comes with manufacturing. <clears throat> you could have machines going and you hire 100 people and then after you start, you're making a profit, your profit starts going down, they start looking at that and saying, well, how can we be more efficient, right? So our company is really, really big in that. And, you know, we do process improvements and we try to you know, get 50% more, you know, improvement for productivity or, mm -hmm. you know, in some of the cases, we haven't laid off because of that, but just saying that some companies have to go through that where they let people go because they're fat on the headcount. And, and that's just part, and I know you keep saying, you know, the people on the top, but but that's, you know, they're, they're the ones that are responsible for everybody that are there. And if you have 100 people and and you don't need the 100 people, you know, they have to do something and they can't just keep all those people. And it is their fault at the beginning for hiring too many people. But yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And uh, the fact is that what so what do we do about this? You know, I mean, this is something. We, you the know, guys the, on the top are making the decisions, well, so the, the they're not going to say, you know what, we're too fat. I don't, I don't really do much here. You guys can take that part of the job, and you'll be <laughs> fine. So I'll just quit. I'll just let myself go. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, but I want to know. Let me just turn up the air conditioning in here. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I would like to know where the government is, where all these things are concerned, where, where they don't jump in and say. Hey, you know, we're not going to give tax. We're going to give tax breaks to people who hire this many people. But if you don't have that many people, goodbye. We're, you're going to have to pay extra taxes or something to start saving jobs of people. We're just hardworking people, and they like working at these companies, and they do right by them, and they do their job every day. And all of a sudden, what do they get for their loyalty and for their service and for working hard? Goodbye. There's the door. See you later. You know, Start charging the taxes to the church first, then we go for business. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's another story altogether. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> I find that it it often before the big changes happen, mm -hmm. the vice president of R and D or whatever they'll change him, they'll fire him, and replace him with another guy because he's much better. And maybe he costs even less. And you know what? He comes in and he's not any good of the one that they got rid of. That's right. That's right. But, but I'll, 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 yeah. I'll, and the I'll, same thing, they go, well, I'm going to change that again. And then the, the people who come in have no idea what the business is about, what the technology is, what the solutions are, what are anything. And they don't do anything. And then, ultimately, the business starts going down. The numbers go down. Ultimately, the only thing you got to do is get rid of people. Yeah, and wait, wait till one year comes up and they get their bonus. I've seen that before too. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, right. What do you mean before they get their bonus? Oh. Everybody gets five they get their bonus after being there a year. Their their stock and everything. Oh, oh, the the heads of the company. If, if yeah, we we've had some people come up from LA, like Irvine. And uh, yeah, man, and we said this, you know, our, our company is very, very fast paced and, and it's really special people that work there to handle it. And, 
Yeah, man, we see some people going, oh, my God, these guys are taking the money and running. You know, they're going to be here for a year, and then they're gone. And, you know, that's what people jump to job to job, you know. So y- yesterday I celebrated my 20-year anniversary at my company. What, and they fly you? <laughs> and this very, huh? They fired you, he said. I got fired. Yeah, I got fired. Got a job. I guess so- somebody kept sending me messages on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the boss? That was you. It's been a lovely 20 years. Yeah, so, so I, I, see, I see some guys, you know, they do their year and, and skip town, you know. Well, you know, I mean, the thing is that, that it's all bad business. I mean, people wonder why these companies go out of business. And it's because they're, they're, you know, they just go nuts. You know, they think that by getting rid of people, they're going to help the bottom line. Also, here's the thing. Yeah that it is the fault of the people at the top of the company isn't making money. And what it is, is they have a um, uh, uh, insulation against being fired. Here's the insulation. People at the bottom get to fire so many people before they lose their job. And then the next uh, person up ahead of that, 10 more people have to go before he loses his job. The person at the very top is insulated. It's totally insulated. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, eventually they get wise and they get rid of that guy and they think that's going to solve their problems, but they've already dug a hole so deep they can't get out of it. So, you know, I... I so, uh, so so losing two or 300 people to a company as big as your company that you used to work for is is small. I mean... I, no, but it's a percentage of what? Of what department? Right. I, I got that part. Yeah, logistics. We're the ones that built all the displays. Basically, we kept things going. And now they outsourced it all to a company. A good cup co- actually, all of a sudden, they're overwhelmed because they, there was no plans for this. There was nothing written beforehand. And the people that are left, that there's no plans or anything in place about how they're moving forward. Mm-hmm. So this was not thought out very well. And even the way how I was officially let go, it was over the phone. Oh. My human resources person who was in India. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Give man, me a break. Bad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, you had Some to get get an an Say that again. <laughs> yeah, no, Tony, that's exactly. And, and Right? I mean, I hate to make it a joke. You got to say that a little slower. <laughs> Don't I mean, come I in mean, <laughs> This is like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it was like, <laughs> yeah, no, that's terrible. Couldn't your boss call you? No, my you? boss, my boss didn't even know. What was, in fact, he didn't even know. No communication had, in this place. He had no idea. No one had any idea. We just got like a day's notice in advance. We knew something was coming down. And no, that never happened. To you. That would never happen in a place you work. Wouldn't they tell you like you're getting fired? <laughs> Only it was like. That's horrible. Oh yeah, Tony. Tony, have you ever worked anywhere where other than Seven I Eleven? Mean, <laughs> well, I almost got let go in key food, but they kept me. My meat manager was a born again Christian. Alex, what a fruitcake this guy was. Okay, all right. Well, we're not talking. <laughs> you didn't right want to know that, about yeah. that story. So, so, so Vinnie so Mario. Had, <laughs> That's like what an asshole. I was at a small PC board manufacturing <laughs> company when I was younger and a supervisor. Hewlett Packard. And and they yeah. no, I was at HP too in high school, but. But, but this company and they had we had layoffs going on and so I had like seven people to lay off and one was a little bit hard because that lady had been with us for two years uh, as a temp and uh-huh. we didn't convert her and then we, we let her go so I let those people go the next uh-huh. morning I get my boss who's new and didn't know anything like you guys were saying didn't know the technology like Jeff was saying yeah. and then he goes and says oh yeah uh, you have a meeting you got to be in there at the quarter to eight in the front conference room I said oh, okay so I have my clipboard and I'm, I'm sort of going through some stuff in the morning and I go to the meeting and I sit in there and I look around me I'm like what the hell meeting is this and I look around some of the people that I knew were on the list but they were like you know a little bit higher up on the list not my associates and I look around and I realize oh shit and then HR came in and she sat down and she says uh, oh yeah, and right when she came in the door, I said, I'm gone, I'm gone, I don't need to be here. So I got up and I walked out the door and she goes, oh, I have papers for you to sign. And I said, well, you better hurry up because I'm going to my desk and I'm going home. And then they came running after me and then, yeah, it was a mess, but they laid me off and I was just like, 
How could you make me lay off people the day I, what before, I find, and then the next day you lay me off? What, what I find so <laughs> horrible. Uh, what I find so horrible about uh, <laughs> about Mark's story, okay, yeah. is that he got a call from HR in India. They even yeah. outsourced the firing of it. I mean, come on. They, they actually have their HR in India? Well, I think they, they outsourced, a, again. But I, 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 is there I some would, law that HR has to be on premises? That's you a know? challenge out of the United States when I, you get to I, I was like, oh, and, and then one of my coworkers who actually were very good friends. I mean, he's like brother from a different mother. Yeah. We were, we were actually joking about this. It was like, <laughs> wow, you know. Uh, you kind of laugh a little. I mean, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, uh, I feel bad for you, but geez. oh, Tony, <laughs> this is this is such. You know, I thought when I, when I would have took you out to dinner. I, I, I thought <laughs> when I was let go from yeah. the, the the former division of Warner Music Group that I worked for, I thought that was the one that was like, well, there's a kicker kicking the ass. This one is the board. This is the one that's like, you yeah. know, but they but they gave you a good severance. Actually, yeah, they actually paid for my health insurance for six months. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and that, that in itself. And then, I, I, you know, I get like, I get a severance package based on, geez, the nine years I've been at this place. So, so I bet you got a lot a, of companies don't even pay severance. They just say, we're yeah. done with you. Have a nice day. How long yeah. is your severance yeah. for? Yeah. Uh, they give it to you in a lump sum. Well, right. oh, they give it to you in a lump oh. sum. Yeah. Oh, okay. Take the taxes go up. Yeah, no, I was say, if I get a bigger You don't get any severance pay. Yeah, that would be nice if they paid you off in increments so that it, the taxes weren't as bad. Oh, no, no. The one nice thing about Florida, yeah, I agree. Well, but you know where the payment is. The only, the only thing they're going to take out is federal. Yeah. yeah. But that's mm -hmm. a big bite. Yeah. Well, they don't take out for city and state because our uh, real estate tax is what pays for all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's why a lot of people move down here is because... Yeah. It, you know, you know, Mark, I don't know what you were making. And you don't, I'm not asking. But you can go to work for... I'm in California. You can go to work for McDonald's and make $20 an hour. That's what they're paying now. That's okay, the, but you know, do you know what the cost of living... Yeah, yeah, it's a big difference. I'm... I'm yeah. I'm not saying move to California. I'm just saying that McDonald's used to be a job for kids. Yep. Now you can make thirty-five thousand dollars a year flipping hamburgers. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. in California on thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you have maybe so forty smaller, years ago you could. Yeah. Some smaller, some smaller businesses now are going out of business because right. now they can't yeah. afford to pay that's somebody right. twenty dollars. So. Yep, that's right. Yeah, I mean, everything is good or bad, so. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the the worst thing is not wanting to pay people, you know? I mean, that's the guts of your company, are the people who work for you. And most companies don't realize that anymore. You just... Well, they think everybody's replaceable, too, sometimes, to a lesser degree. Everybody is replaceable, Tony. Eh, you can't even really the, say that about the, everything. Even the CEO... Is I don't think so. I, I, have... I know a great radio announcer that was replaceable. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> well, I, no, you'll you, never be you guys replaceable. Ever... He's oh. talking about Jack Bishop. Right, no. <laughs> Did you guys <laughs> know? Uh, no, that was Dolph diversity West and inclusion. Now okay. they needed a female on GapNet, so they yeah. got rid of the other. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, or, however, she isn't a black female. If she was a black yeah, female, it would have really helped. Us. Oh, one step at a time. But we had no women. So you got no women on the panel today, too. So you, we had you know, by getting your severance at one at all at one time, you should be able to file unemployment if you're going to do this. Oh, I'm filing file I'm, unemployment and get it right away. Oh, oh yeah, that. Don't worry. What, about, what's that, the unemployment that, situation in uh, in Florida? We have the worst unemployment. Ever of any really when I, I, I when Not I lived many in jobs Pennsylvania was the best at the time when I worked up there Florida has the worst but it's better than nothing you know so I'll Mine take it was uh, let's see here and I never went for unemployment but I finally said ah what the hell you know uh, I may as well go get it you get paid it. into it I mean really and it was like uh, no, uh, four hundred dollars a week I think for uh, only about sixteen weeks you know. That's pretty from Florida? Well, yeah, but, uh, New York. It, 
If if it comes out to like two hundred and fifty a week, I'll be lucky. That's what it is wow. in Texas. Two hundred and fifty dollars a week. You just yeah, for how many weeks? A year or something like oh, that. Oh really? I, well, you see, in New York. I think yeah. I think it might be a half a year, Charlie, down here. Yeah, yeah you're you're they they tell you this is the total amount and you know, you file it every other week. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I mean well, Money's so, money. I'll so, take it. So shall we start a GoFundMe for uh, for? Send you uh, a box of books. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've never That's filed for unemployment. It's kind of weird. Were you? So I, th I think you guys got to understand that that I had the the most craziest way of getting fired. Oh. So this big company. A Gulf stroke will Western, do that to you. Listen to this. Oh. I say, okay, you got a new job in Chicago, that was good. And and what the thing was, I was gonna be like an R&D uh, manager working on new projects in like 15 different factories that they had over the United States. Okay, sounds like a big job. Sounds great, right? Yeah. So I'm there, you know, the first two weeks, just kind of getting to understand what the system is and where I ought to go and this and that. And the boss is like a nice guy who hired me. All that stuff's good. Two weeks, he calls me back. He says, I got to talk to you about something. This is what's the matter. He says, they're shutting the whole thing down. And and you're out. Oh, and I'm probably going too. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a company. Did you move for this company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Oh, jeez. That sucks. But I hate anyway. when you got to move from from uh, where you're at to Chicago just to deliver newspapers. Yeah, well, <laughs> I went there, and the guy says, "Well, he says it's really strange, but you were here two weeks, so I'll give you two months off since you're leaving, and and it's it's not, but it's better than nothing, right?" And yeah. I said. How about instead of two weeks, how about three weeks? Oh, uh, the negotiator. Big negotiator, right? <laughs> I should have asked him for 12. But yeah, yeah, I would have paid for your money. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Year, years ago, I got fired by somebody. I can't remember. There were a couple of times I got fired in my career. And uh, they said, unfortunately, uh, uh, what is they didn't They didn't say they were firing me. Laid uh, off. They were they were uh, restructuring, restructuring or yeah, something like that's that. Usually what it is. And I yeah, said, so I you, you're, you're not firing me, but you're restructuring. Restructuring. I, I said, so let me get this straight. Do I come into work Monday? And they went. <laughs> they no. went no. And I said, sounds <laughs> like firing to me. <laughs> you know. I'm out of here. By every definition I ever had of being fired, that was certainly would come under the category. So, yeah. You know. So, speaking of jobs, you know, I've been working in Lodi for the last three years on all the projects, China and India and everything. Yeah. 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 They asked me if I would consider running Sunnyvale again. So, I'm back in Sunnyvale starting Monday. Oh, really? I hope you ask for Some a raise. Facebook friends know that. Wait a minute. How far uh, is how is how much of you know? closer or further away is Sunnyvale? Sunnyvale is a half hour away. Uh, uh, um, Lodi is an hour and a half. Oh wow! So you're you're closer to home. Because I've yeah. been, so I've been commuting three days a week to Lodi, and then two days a week I go into Sunnyvale, but I work only Lodi projects. So now they have the guy who is running that. Who, he took my position. I used to run that, and then he's been running it for the last five years after I left. And now they've asked me to take it over again. So. Okay, so but this isn't a step out the door, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I one of my list of, one of my list of demands was to make sure that we're talking about my next. Yeah. I want to. I want to get back in the day. Do you want to get back well, in the way? The, the good thing is, is you'll save a fortune in gas. Yeah. No, I'll be good. Actually, actually, I'm making money money off the gas. What? Uh, what you're making? It's personal car usage. It's not gas. Oh, so they pay for your gas. They were paying they, for they pay, gas. Yeah, they pay so much uh, a mile, and that sort of covers gas, and then sort of like you know the wear and tear of a car. Because I think I had like eighty thousand miles on that car, and now I have one fifty-two. <laughs> so I've been driving the heck out of it. Not the McLaren. Don't start. 
Yeah, we wouldn't want that McLaren to get too many miles on it. <laughs> yeah, it has a lot of fun miles. For sure. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm happy. A lot of people still work there from when I was there before COVID. So, uh, so it's 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 nice. It's it's nice to see everybody. Again. And they're they're going. Oh, here comes that asshole boss again. <laughs> Mark, Mark, <laughs> are, are you? Um, uh, uh, do you have any possibilities of employment at all? We'll see. Uh -huh. Oh, Mark. Yeah. We'll see. You know that. I hate this. That there's like no rush. And whatever happens, happens. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. So, well, it's, uh, you know, I'm sorry to hear that it happened. Yeah. You know, and you've been there for nine years, for crying out loud. You know, I know what it's like to be somewhere nine years, and then all of a sudden uh, not have a job anymore. You know? Yeah. I. It's funny, when I got fired from Sirius XM, I never, ever... Anytime I, I, I ever got let go from a radio station, um, I was, I didn't feel bad about it. I didn't feel embarrassed by it or anything like that. And usually when you get fired, you feel that way, you know, you feel, uh, but I didn't feel that way until I got fired from Sirius XM. And then I really felt bad about that, you know? Because I liked what I was doing, and I liked the people I was working with. Uh, you know, in a lot of ways, it was a shit company, and it still is. Look at its stock price. You know, uh, I'm surprised they still have their doors open. Um, but uh, it, it really was hurtful to me. I felt bad, you know? And it was the only time in my life I felt that way. And... Uh, and I said to my bosses at the time, I said, well, I guess this is the end of my career. And they said, oh, no, you'll find another job next week. You're Alex Bennett. Yeah? Well, when's that job coming? You know? <laughs> I knew yeah. that at 75 to start looking for a job was impossible. You know? So, uh, uh, and I was right. You know, it was the last job I ever had in radio. You know, I've, I've done a couple of nights here and there on radio stations, but but that's it. You know, and uh, also when you let somebody go at my age, you pretty well got to figure that that's uh, that's pretty pretty much it for them. You know, I mean, I, you're probably feeling that way too, right, Mark? You're how old now? Uh, yeah. You know, but I ain't down for the count. <laughs> no, know? don't give up. No, no, no. It's like, no, it's like, believe me, I appreciate the absurdity of the, of the situation and I, yeah. and well, even the bizarre humor that it can represent. Mm -hmm. Well, the following so, Monday, I started GabNet and look at the fortune I've made now out of this. <laughs> you can become a rabbi down there, Mark. Yeah, you should see the checks we get, Mark. It's, it's awesome. What? You should see the checks that we get for this show. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I pay them all. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah, live in a major my friends, city, he, Mark? He's, one of my friends is like a year younger than me, and he was a he's been director for a couple uh, couple companies, big companies actually in the Silicon Valley, and now he's looking for a job and he's having a really tough time. And he actually made a mention to me saying. He, you know, he said, sad to see, but I'm seeing ageism. I'm seeing, you know, he's he's a white male and he sees that he's being passed up or, or, or other people getting positions, you know, that whole diversity thing. Uh, and he just says it's, it's very hard for him. And he's with, been some, with some really big name companies uh, trying to find another job. And he's even trying to, you know, go outside his, his box a little bit, trying to get something he can't find anything. He says, man, I'm being passed up by younger. And I just, yeah, so... Well, I, I felt that when I was let go, it was ageism. You know, it was my age. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, they, it, and my proof of the fact was, this is, this, you, you're going to love this, they had me sign a agreement when I left <laughs> saying that I would not sue them for ageism. I would have run and, and, my and, ass and they in told that me that, wait a minute and they told me that if I didn't sign it I wouldn't get my severance. Severance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, and I said to them isn't this ageism 
having me sign this? <laughs> you know, obviously you're admitting to the fact that it was ageist. If you don't sign it, we can't give you your severance. Now, I knew that I could sign it and I could still go to any good lawyer and they could probably still sue them saying, uh. hey, he was forced to do it, otherwise he wasn't going to get his severance, which he was due, you right. know. But that's what companies do, you know. Uh, luckily, they didn't do it with, uh, with uh, uh, a mark, you know. I, here's the good news, Mark. I've never been in that store that you used to work for. And now that I know that they'll fire people like that, I won't. Well, I was thinking of going to them because I was mad at B&H. But, but I still have Adorama left. So I like, I like B&H, <laughs> even though they're in the East Coast. Well, no, what happened was B&H went, uh, why don't you sign up for one of our credit cards? Oh, boy. Right? And we'll, uh, once you get put stuff on the credit card, we will not have you pay the tax. We'll pay the tax. And I'm going, that's good, cool. I just bought a, a almost $7,000 machine or $6,000 machine. Tax was like 500 bucks. Hey, that'd be terrific. So I filled it out. Well, I never heard anything. All of a sudden, one day I get a thing in the mail. You've been denied because we can't verify all these various things. Now, I've got a FICO score to make your eyes bleed, okay? Uh, and everything on that FICO score is, I, I, you know, it's golden. And yet these guys, this little fucking shit heel bank out of Chicago, won't give me a B&H credit card? Screw them. They don't want my business, I'll go over to Anaramba, you know? But don't insult me by saying that I've never been refused for a credit card in my life. Yeah, neither and have I, I. And when I told my business manager about this, he said, that's full of crap. He said, and they went out, he got me my FICO score. He said, look at this. And it says, you know, all the things on it, uh, uh, exceptional, 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 you know. And uh, this little uh, two-bit two, two bank out of Chicago thinks I, I'm sorry, we can't, uh, you know, we can't do it. We can't give you credit. So that's uh, weird. Hmm? That's I, weird. I, I mean, my my FICO score is real high too. It's like eight thirty, eight forty, out of eight fifty, on on all of them. And um, I mean, I've I, I haven't asked for a credit card in a while. I got the three that I use, and that's all I need. But you know, I get these things in the mail all the time. Sign up for our credit card. Why? I well, I, I'm the only guy I know who has as much money as I know who can't get this credit card. Yeah. You know. yep. Apparently, they got their reporting from people who didn't know what they were reporting. Yeah. You know. Uh, or they don't like Jews. I think they were using Equifax, which is a crummy outfit. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, but anyway, so, you know, I mean, what's better than a FICO score? Good FICO score. Right, a big bank account, and a huge bank account. Yes, yeah, okay. there you go. Yeah, and it was pretty, it was even pretty good before I came into some money, but it's especially large now. And with Mar Marjorie's apartment and everything, uh, you know, uh, our assets amount to more than a million dollars. I can't get a credit card. Are you out of your mind? You know, so. Huh. Uh, well, you know that that's it. that's that's life. Okay, so I I I, I should apply with them. <laughs> See well, if they deny me because my my. Well, you might not have a, as much of a problem as me because guess what, I'm 84 years old. Yep, that's what I, I'm thinking. And I am not currently employed. Our our neither am I, but our 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 FICO scores are close, and our assets are close, and so. I'm I'm wondering if they did it based on ageism. Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, it could well be, you know, but they'll never admit to it. <clears throat> no, you well, know, we're you, not that far apart in age. So. I, I mean, th that was the thing that bothered me about Sirius mm -hmm. XM. You want me to sign this thing? By asking <laughs> me to sign this thing, obviously, there's ageism involved here. Otherwise, you wouldn't have me sign it, you know. If you felt you could go into a court of law and defend yourself because you didn't do it for ageist reasons, you know, 
So, I mean, that, but the, it's just the whole uh, people today are not being paid what they should be paid. People are not being uh, 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 given the the special qualities. I mean, if you run a company, you should want your employees to be very happy, and therefore you should give them good benefits, and you should give them make them feel proud to work for your company. I got to tell you, this is a this is what happens in, uh, in, oddly enough, in China. People go to work for a company in China, and they work for that company for Forever. the rest of their lives. And yep. they're proud of the association with that company. Used and, to be that way here. And the company treats them well. Okay? Yep. Uh, now, I know that sounds horrible because it's China, but the fact is, that's the way they do business in China. I've talked to people who work over there, employed by Chinese companies. Hell, my wife was employed by a Chinese company. And uh, when she left, they, they took care of her for two years after she left. We got full medical and everything. They didn't pay her full, uh, you know, the I, price. I haven't had to apply for a credit card in a long time. Did they give you a reason? Yeah, it, it's some reason, but we can't establish that you have a this and you and that, and it was all the stuff that was right there in my credit reports, you know. Uh, uh, Aren't there laws against them doing that? Pro I, I, pro probably not. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. I guess you know, and I don't care. I yeah. didn't want this goddamn credit card, but I figured, hell, if they, they every time I would go and buy something at B and H, they said, "You want to apply for this card? You want to apply for this?" Because so finally, I said, "Okay, I I wanted to buy something that had enough taxes on it that it about five hundred dollars worth of taxes that it would be worth it to me to do it." So I did it, and what do they yeah. do? Sorry, we can't give it to you. You know, well. And I know it's not B and H. They're not doing it. it's this bank company. Oh, whatever, Chicago. yeah, whatever bank they use. Yeah. Sure. Do you yeah. ever think about giving your equipment back to them? No, I like it too much. You know? Why don't you go to B and H and say you guys offered me to pay for my? Taxes? I know. I should have bought it at Best Buy. That's right. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but well, you know, I still the Adorama gives the same prices basically on stuff, and uh, you know, they're fine. You know, yep. plus I, you know, I don't have to deal with these super yids over at uh, B and H. <laughs> I've been there. If, if, <laughs> if you know what I mean, yes. you know. Although I will have to say, as a company, B and H really handles their business pretty well. I mean, you go down to pick something up, they're good, and they're good. They're really good, you know. Uh, they have it ready for you, and it's you're in and out. And uh, uh, yeah. they're, uh, you know, they're 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 a fairly decent company, except they're I not open. Also, what I think, I think also because back my, I remember Forty Seventh Street Photo. I uh, think yes. they were somehow affiliated with them. I think, but that was a long, long well, time. Forty Seventh Street Photo were another bunch of years. Yeah, you know, I, I use the term because I'm Jewish and I can do it. Okay, God, they're taking over the world. <laughs> no, it's these guys from out in Brooklyn, you know, out in uh, who, uh, the same ones that own this apartment house. Okay, I, I know I've done business with them all my life. Yeah, but uh, 47th Street photo, I remember, you know, I remember all the women there working who wore wigs. Yep, yeah, you know, because they have to have their heads covered. And all the yeah. guys in Yamakas and Pais and so on. But it was a great place to go to get a bargain on some stuff, yeah. you know? It was a, it was a go. Did they, did they become B&H? There's an affiliation. I'm not sure, but there is something. Uh, but my God, you know, when, when they, they had equipment that no one else had that I needed. So, and the prices, yeah, like prices said, were great, right? Yeah, prices were fantastic. Yeah, so, they were insane. A little crazy, Actually, anyway. Alex, do you remember Uncle Steve's on Canal Street? Yes, vaguely. Yeah. I, the name rings a bell. Okay, so he does, had, so does I Quasimodo. Think he, had, he, he, 
he had better radio commercials than uh, Dr. Jerry doing uh, the Crazy Eddie ones. Really? Yeah, they, they, were, they were really funny. And what was great about their shop was they had a wall of boom boxes that went floor to ceiling in the back of their shop. All the way, you just saw like this wall of sound. It was like, it's really, really incredible. Well, uh, uh, Crazy Eddie's was not the kind of place I would go, for instance, to buy a, uh, a, a computer. Yeah. yeah, Crazy Eddie's is where you went to get stereos and really boxes and yeah. things like that. And the same thing with Uncle Steve's as well, you know. Yep. But, I mean, those were some, uh, uh, people should know, these were two very big outfits here in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, I never heard of either of them. Yeah. Uh, but you've yeah, heard of, you, you, you've heard of, of B and H, but they only. I've, I've done I've done business with B and H. But they only have one store, mm. you, you know. But everybody knows B and H because they advertise nationally and so on. I and, know about them through Phil. And quite frankly, I wanted this machine that I bought in a certain configuration, and if I went to uh, Apple, I went online to Apple, it would have taken them six weeks to deliver it to me, to configure it and then to deliver it to me. They had the configuration in house, really. So that's why I bought from them. Wow. Uh, otherwise, I, I would have bought directly from Apple. But you know, and it didn't save me that much money anyway. Uh, and if I went over, same thing. If I went over to Adorama, they didn't have this configuration. Uh -huh. So you know, it, it, they just have more configurations of stuff. They keep more stuff in stock. And uh, they were, they do run a good business. It's just I can't get a credit card at B and H. Oh, that would frost my clams. Do you have my clams? credit is so good? I own <laughs> property and stuff. I have bank accounts. My, cre my credit, my credit, my credit is terrific. It's gone down over the years because I don't work. Okay, so and I haven't gotten any new credit cards. I haven't established any newer credit, so that's what's causing the problem. Yeah. There is the boy. Is she growing up? Yeah. Yeah. yeah boy, she's is not she. growing down. That's for sure. She's not a puppy anymore. No, you know. she's not. Uh, you gonna give me a face? Or are you giving me? A face? Oh, look at that. That's Adrian, by the way. That's uh, that's uh, Brian's uh, daughter. Daughter. daughter my issue that's my issue yeah <laughs> what was the story i heard oh god i gotta go to play some theme song yeah. here quickly the thing i heard today was that kim kardashian told the story about how she was out somewhere with her father robert kardashian who was the lawyer for oj simpson right and yeah. they went somewhere and somebody thought that that was his girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> How insulting can that be? Anyway, hey, listen, this has been really nice. We had a nice time today. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm not going to do a show. I figure if Thursdays are a wash, and I'm going to try this new format out for one night in which it's a whole show full of interviews with uh, people like Lori and uh, Chuck Farnham and uh, Albert Reynoso. And it's all pre recorded and in a nice little package. And then we'll be back again here on uh, on Friday. Does anybody mind if I do that? Mm -hmm. And as long as you're not working now, Mark, we'd love yeah, to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you more. Often. That was cold. Do we do we still get paid for tomorrow night? Yeah, you still get paid for tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm fine. With that. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, I didn't want any of you to think I'd stiff you. Anyway. Yeah, I didn't want to blast you on a podcast. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Alan. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Mark. Please, Mark, now that you're available. Oh, I think, yeah. Please. Yeah, you can come often. Yeah, Brian, thank you. And Tony, hey, thank you. You'll get the checks in the mail, Mark. Don't worry. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there's one uh, getting uh, assembling. Uh, next on the uh, the intersection with uh, Amy Manuel. Uh, uh, we won't be here tomorrow night. We will have a, a, a show, a very good show, uh, but uh, we want you to uh, check it out. And uh, I'm just doing it to see how it works, okay? And then we'll be back here on the Friday night live, 
okay, taking your calls and so on. In the meantime, as always, uh, stay where you are, and I'll see you on Friday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Thank you.